ladies and gentlemen, uh, and all the spectators in the wireless world, and all you here, we people, let's welcome each other now. And um, on the behalf of uh, organizations, I will uh, just briefly present Culture for All Service, together with Globe Art Point, uh, is organizing this final seminar of project of our opening. The aim of the project is to create models uh, that support possibilities uh, of arts and culture professionals with migrant backgrounds uh, to be employed in a, by Finnish art and cultural institution, and thus enabling their better inclusion in the Finnish society. In this process, uh, the research, the status of foreign-born arts and cultural professionals in Finland plays a vital role in understanding the situation and finding together the best possible solutions. And that's what we are looking for here, a discussion and finding solutions. And just briefly about Globart Point. We are NGO, four years old, and the core mission of Globe Art Point is in advocate, advocating in cultural equity, equity, diversity and inclusion in the arts and cultural sector in Finland. CAP also serves as an information center and a meeting point for artists, cultural workers and arts and cultural institutions in Finland. So we, we are here to meet, we are here to bridge. Uh, our focus is in, on foreign-born artists and cultural workers living and working in Finland, that they would be acknowledged and their untapped uh, potential fully, fully utilized. Uh, together with our stakeholders and collaborators, uh, we are dedicated to improve the existing structures and building society free from a cultural discrimination or any other form of oppression. Our goal is to create constructive and action-driven dialogues with entire society, from local grassroots to the national level. Uh, Oti, please, would you like to present uh, Culture for All and give us, this, and give us the safest space uh, rules? Thank you. Thank you, Jana. Uh, my name is Outi Salanlahti and I'm substituting our executive director, Mira Haataja, who was supposed to be here now, today to welcome you all, um, but she's a bit sick, so she's watching online. Um, and I'm reading her opening words here. So, um, well, welcome from also from uh, the Culture for All, uh, all uh, behalf and Culture for All Service is, um, is an organization who promotes cultural services that are inclusive and take diverse audiences and art professionals into account. Um, we offer information and tools for workers um, in the cultural field and uh, our aim is to improve accessibility and knowledge of diversity. And this AVAUS opening project was a joint project with Culture for All and Globe Art Point and Kubore. Uh, and it was about inclusion, equity and participation of arts. Um, and uh, I'm very happy uh, that we are here to listen and discuss the findings of Kubore's research. And uh, hopefully we can discuss the necessary changes at different levels. So what are the steps towards better consideration of diversity at the level of decision-making, at the level of cultural institutions, as well as in content and public work. Um, let's look today what we have found and how to continue from here. So um, the audience both here in Athenaeum Hall and online can participate on the seminar, uh, on this discussion and questions after the break. So feel free to participate then. And next I will uh, go through the 
safer space rules and guidelines for this event. So this is a discrimination free uh, and harassment free zone. Uh, so that means we need to respect and listen to others. Uh, don't make any assumptions about people. Everyone has the right for their individual sovereignty. Try to be aware of your own assumptions. Uh, talk only about your own experience and not on behalf of, of others. And dare, dare also to ask, there are no right or wrong questions. And we can um, guide each other, discuss and be open to new perspectives. And let's try to use comprehensive and common language so that everyone can understand. Um, let's try to create a positive atmosphere and take care of people who are around you. If you disagree with somebody, try to, try to raise the matter in a constructive and peaceful manner. And if, there, if something feels uncomfortable, uh, please raise the issue, for example, by informing the organizers. So you can contact me, Odi, or Jana, uh, or Satu behind there, or Alex, or Sebide, for example. Um, and we have some printed material in the lobby, so you feel free to take it with you. And all, all that material is also available online, cultureforall.fi. And yeah, I will take care of the schedule from now on, uh, but Jana, please continue. Oh, okay, and we are like one minute late, but let's now we start taking it like in a relaxed mode. And I would like to invite uh, the director of uh, Ateneum Art Museum, Maria Sakari, to in, have an introduction as well. Welcome, Maria. Thank you very much and welcome also from my part. Uh, it's really fantastic that this closing uh, seminar is happening here in Ateneum because all the values that are in case in this project are shared with us as well. So we just one week ago, we, we uh, had the uh, festival Urban Apa, which is really about inclusion, which is about uh, Finnish artists, Finnish um, artists who, who have um, immigrated here to Finland, uh, that they have the possibility to, to show their artworks, to, to have a platform to, to perform and to, to be here in, in Ateneum. And also we have the other pro project, the Kaiku uh, project, which is going on at the moment. And uh, well, I suppose there will be a short talk about uh, the project itself, but that is also something that we started one year ago and which is um, funded by the, the Ministry of Culture. And it's a, a, a project where we have uh, three other partners. Uh, so uh, the aim of the project is really to, um, to try to help uh, immigrants to, to uh, learn our Finnish language and also our culture through the artworks that we are showing here because the whole process is, the, is actually more like a dialogue and we are all uh, learning within this project. So I think all these, um, uh, the aim of these uh, projects is also to, to make the, the um, entrance to Ateneum very easy to everybody. And that is also something that we, we value in our museum. Our museum is for everybody. Uh, but it's not evident that it feels the same when, when you ha have not the habit to come into our museum. And that is our aim and our, uh, we, we have to try to make the threshold uh, as low as possible. And I think these questions, these issues, they are always also in, in our mind when we are uh, working here in Ateneum. And I think there is a lot to do I mean, the, the, the projects are not finished and, and the, the interaction with everybody, it's, not, it's, it's an ongoing process where everybody has to keep in mind that we are doing this together and we are really 
having a dialogue and we try to develop different kinds of uh, possibilities for all Finnish people to, to also to work in our museum, to do projects and so on and so forth. Uh, and those issues, they, they have to be uh, repeated so that they become a kind of common uh, thing that we all know and that, that we, we value these things. And well, with these words, I, I wish you all welcome and I wish you a very fruitful seminar. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maria, for your kind words and very inspiring to hear how Atheneum is uh, working together with us. And um, then I would like to ask uh, Maria Niskavara to present the uh, Kaiku, Project Kaiku Echo. Maria, please. Okay, hello everybody. Nice to see you. My name is Maria Niskavara and I'm the project coordinator of Kaiku project, the ECHO uh, in English. And this is a two years project we started a year ago, so one year ago. And I'm here to tell a little bit about what this project is about. So, in a nutshell, Kaiku is a two years project, uh, as Maria said, funded by the Ministry of the Culture and Education. And during this Kaiku project, we serve guided tours that are designed especially for Finnish language students. Our partners here are the Institute of Adult Education uh, in Helsinki, the Finnish Museum Association, and the Finnish Center for Easy Language. <clears throat> when we started Kaiku project, our major question was, how could museums serve better those visitors who have just started to learn a new language, in this case Finnish, or those for whom the language used usually in museum space is not accessible for some other reason. With this question in mind, uh, we started the pilot with the students of Institute of Adult Education in Helsinki. Uh, and our working hypothesis was that art and art museums could serve as safer space to express one one's emotions, feelings, experiences, and memories with the new language. Uh, now, the Kaiku visitors are representatives of various ages and genders, as well as uh, socioeconomical backgrounds and professional backgrounds as well. Uh, Merely the only thing what is common with them all is that they are currently learning new language Finnish. And for this kind of group, we decided to offer museum uh, tours uh, that are based on open discussion, like a dialogue in front of the artworks. Because we believe that art offers a context that enables somehow people to discover a common interests uh, or share their experiences that raise from the art they are seeing. Of course, each group and each encounter uh, are different. 
but we believe that tours will give uh, every participant an opportunity to talk about their own story or ideas awakened by the works they see here in museum space. Based on the original idea of Kaiku, all doors are conducted in easy finish uh, that, uh, that is adapted to the group's level of proficiency. Uh, we wanted that students at all levels, all proficiency uh, of language uh, could feel that uh, they, can, they can participate, they can share their ideas and no one would feel they are excluded somehow. We hope that these kind of tours encourages people uh, spontane spontaneously uh, participate in speaking Finnish whether the student's uh, level of language is uh, almost native or they, they just know some, some or few Finnish words. And that is why all the guides, guides we have here uh, in this project are trained to speak easy Finnish when needed. What we hope is that eventually Kaiku could be a national program that offers easy access language services in museum space everywhere in Finland. Uh, that is why Kaiku will be uh, made available to other Finnish museums uh, in form of training, seminars, maybe workshops. And we will also publish an uh, open access toolbox uh, in our website. Uh, to enable anyone to study a little bit about the methods and ideas we uh, are using to develop this Kaiku concept. Uh, what we hope that our methods and ideas uh, could be adapted in various kinds of museums, not only art museums, but for example, cultural history museums, or why not, for example, science museums or technical museums. But of course, we don't want to offer an easy recipe. We, we don't want that this happens so that we tell that we did this thing like this way and please do the same thing as we did. Kaiku uh, is not its methodology. It's uh, more about an attitude. Uh, also, the idea of Kaiku is not restricted only for language learners but it can be applied for various groups that need, for reason or another, easier access to language-based uh, services or programs. The language is said to be the key to the culture. If so, we want that this key is easily available and simple to use so that the door could be opened by anyone. Thank you very much. Please visit our website. There is a blog and we are also publishing something in Artenium Instagram and other social medias of Artenium Art Museums. Is there any questions or comments and, or ideas? Uh, sorry, could you repeat? Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and my question is about surface forming. Yes. Which is usually available, for example, on Ulip. You know, we have surface forming for uh, even Finnish uh, speaking people who have experienced learning impairments. Didn't we have such kind of service available in museums also? Yeah, very good question. Uh, sorry. Uh, very good question. And that is actually. The starting, point, the starting point of this project, because we realize that uh, there are groups, there are visitors who would need some easily accessible language, as you said, Selkosuomi. 
and that kind of services we lack in the museum field. Not every museum, of course. Some museums have wonderful Selko Suomi uh, programs or uh, text available for their visitors, but not everybody. And we had uh, this kind of survey, surveys and interviews with, uh, uh, with, um, uh, with students and lecturers uh, in adult, adult education. And we asked how it is to visit museums with your groups that are le learning Finnish. And many of them told that it's very difficult because the guides are speaking very quickly or using words that is not too common, but rather like a professional language. And that made us think that is, this, is, this is not sound. We need that kind of uh, language-based programs that are accessible for everyone. Because when you are learning new language, or for example, if you have a bad dyslexia, as I have, uh, it is sometimes very difficult to learn new things. If the language you are, you are told those things is not something you can follow, or there is no, no words that you understand easily. And that was exactly the main, main idea of this program. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. That was interesting and I hope all the best for your project. And also, uh, actually, art is a kind of language of heart as well. And as we promised to keep this like in a familiar mode, so I tell something that is very close to my heart now. I see all the panelists within the audience now, and this is, to me, it warms my heart because sometimes panelists just run up and down, but they are with us all the time. So thank you, panelists. And the next person in line, uh, we have Kupores researcher uh, Emmi Lahtinen, and she is now going to open up the, um, the status of foreign-born artists and cultural professionals in Finland, the key findings. And um, just a reminder, after the panel, we have a Q&A session and Emmy is going to stay here. So you can kind of, uh, if you mind, spare your questions until that as well. So Emmy, been with you a long time and I know you are, you are the best. Come, please. Thank you, Jana. Um, so welcome on my behalf as well. Uh, my name is Emmi Lahtinen and I work as a researcher um, for the Center for Cultural Policy Research, Kupore. Our director, Maria Mäenpä, was supposed to be here today as well um, to discuss briefly. She has taken ill, so I will cover her part, but she sends warm greetings and she's online watching um, this seminar. Um, and thank you, um, Globe Art Point and uh, Culture for All Service for organizing this event and inviting uh, me to speak and share you the findings of our research. And so I'm going to uh, present today some key findings of our research, the opening, the status of foreign born arts and culture professionals in Finland. Uh, I will first briefly introduce the research um, and the methods and uh, data and then uh, go into the key findings. It's quite broad uh, research, so I will only have time to pinpoint a few um, general themes that we came up with. Um, so this was, uh, our research was part of a wider project, and that was a joint project by Kupara, uh, Culture for All, and um, uh, Globe Art Point in 2017-2018, sorry, 2019. And each of um, us organizations, we had our own responsibilities. And Kupara's responsibility was uh, to conduct research, so to uh, gather data, uh, to analyze it, and uh, um, to produce a research report. And this is what I will focus now, just mainly on Kupara's part. So our research objectives um, was the employment and working possibilities of foreign-born art, arts and culture professionals residing and working in Finland. Um, the status um, of arts and culture professionals 
obviously is a wider um, topic. A status can be something else as well than the working status, but we only focused on the employment and working possibilities. And then we also uh, uh, had a look on how the related cultural and linguistic diversity is taken into account in the operation of arts and cultural institutions in Finland and in Arts Promotion Centre Finland, Taike. Um, and the funding for um, our research and the whole project came from the Ministry of Education and Culture. And it came from a funding that was uh, targeted to enable the inclusion of immigrants and asylum seekers into the Finnish society in the sectors of arts and culture and education. And thus our focus group is foreign born arts and culture professionals. Um, the, the problems and challenges uh, that are evident in our research data and that I will also present here today um, can also be faced by others. For example, foreign uh, background arts and culture professionals and persons affected by racialization uh, but they were not um, the main focus group of this particular research. And then our uh, another focus group was the National Arts and Cultural Institutions, as well as the museums, theatres and orchestras um, within the government transfer system. And we also had a closer look into the practices and policies of four organisations, which were the National Museum of Finland, um, the Turku City Theatre, uh, the Kuopio Symphony Orchestra and Taike. And how we collected the research data, uh, we conducted interviews. Altogether 28 persons of these four institutions um, were interviewed and we concentrated on people who were in a position that they were able to uh, make a difference to their decision making. So they were quite high, high up in the hierarchy. Um, and we tried to ask about uh, attitudes and policies and practices. And then um, we did two surveys. The other one was uh, directed to the foreign born professionals. It was uh, targeted both artists and cultural workers. However, it was mainly answered by artists and therefore it tells more about the situation of artists than uh, perhaps cultural professionals. Or we do not know how well um, our findings reflect the situation of um, cultural professionals. And then the other sur uh, survey was sent out uh, to the directors of um, the museums, theatres and orchestras within the central government uh, system. At the time there were uh, roughly about 200 museums, theatres and orchestras in the system. So about half of them answered our survey. And then we had uh, Taiga's grant statistics and other documents that formed out of our research data. And um, about the analysis, I would just like to say that um, the analysis, even though we gathered that data quite, or we try to be very objective, um, the analysis um, is still somehow always affected by our own experiences and the world that we live in. And therefore we as researchers as well have tried to identify our own possession and our own um, assumptions and privileges throughout this project and therefore it has been very vital for us to collaborate uh, with our project partners so that we do not do this um, separately from our focus group but foreign born arts and culture professionals um, can also influence our um, interview questions and uh, to formulate the survey they can also um, provide us insights that will then affect the analysis as well. I will then um, move on to some of the findings and like I said, just to pinpoint a few important um, issues that raised up in our data. Um, but first I'll start with a quote. And this is a, a quote um, that was done in Turku City Theatre with uh, a person who had worked um, a long time in a theatre context. And it summarised um, very well many of the problems that foreign-born arts and culture professionals 
face um, when they try to seek employment in Finland or work within the sector. Um, someone asked if we were doing some kind of a project to employ immigrants. At that point, I had been working as an actor in Finland for 10 years, which tells us who is seen as a professional. Can anyone, regardless of their background, of their ethnic background, raise to the position of being an arts and culture professional in Finland? Roles are very often given out directly. The director has a vision of whom they see in the role and that person is asked to the audition. The roles, um, th this doesn't only apply to in the uh, theatre sector, it also applies uh, to the music and uh, museum sector. Um, the uh, professional connections and networks, they play a significant role on how you connect with people and how you find out about possible uh, uh, job offerings. That's why it is so enormously important that when there's the vision of Temu 25, do persons with a different ethnic background cross the director's mind or is it pigeonholed to a certain looking type? It's quite rare here in Finland for a director or others to immediately think, hey, that actor might be good for this. It's like a certain looking person is immediately seen in the role in their minds. And these might be unintentional, like it's quite evident in our research data that it's not intentional um, for people to, for example, discriminate people in a, a recruitment process, but it might be unintentional, but it still limits the opportunities um, for foreign born arts and cultural professionals to have the equal opportunities um, in the recruitment process. And it also creates racialization, which affects the situation uh, quite significantly. So the experiences of discrimination are common. Um, what makes it a bit difficult is that the experiences of discrimination can be different from what is, what kind of uh, legally falls under discrimination. So therefore, um, some of the experiences of discrimination may not have the validation um, and not be officially acknowledged because they are not legally considered uh, discrimination. Um, there are some specific problems um, that are faced by foreign born professionals. Uh, in addition to the fact that Finnish arts and culture sector has a fierce competition, uh, it's not easy for most people who work in the sector. Um, there's, um, the funding is very limited, everyone has a tight budget, um, grants are difficult to get, but these are few issues that especially uh, foreign born professionals face. So language is uh, one major um, issue and there are um, major differences between this, between different art forms. Certain art forms are more related to language than others, but there's a um, because of not maybe mastering Finnish or Swedish language, there's a lack of information about jobs available. Um, there are language requirements that are not usually reassessed. Um, they might be justified that there are language requirements, but then there are also positions where reassessment might not hurt and uh, it could be reassessed whether perfect Finnish and Swedish language is required. And it also can prevent career develop, development because the higher the position is, the, the more likely it's going to have language requirements. Then there's a lack of recognition of qualifications gained from outside Finland. And this also, there's a big differences between different art forms. Um, for example, orchestras are more easily recognize qualifications gained from outside Finland whereas it seems that in theater a museum is much more linked um, to Finnish education. And it's, um, the directors indicated that they already have a lot of connections to their uh, arts and culture uh, universities, for example, in Finland. So it's easier for them to ask for references when someone is uh, uh, applying for work, whereas uh, uh, organizations or institutions outside Finland are not connected on the same level and therefore it might lead uh, to favor uh, Finnish degrees. Uh, like I said, there's a lack of professional networks, um, there's a lack in uh, accessible information, 
Um, there's prejudice and assumption. On both sides, there are prejudices and assumptions about foreign-born professionals from the uh, Finnish arts and culture sector, but there's also prejudices and assumptions from um, the foreign-born professionals towards uh, the Finnish arts and culture sector, because obviously um, every other um, uh, whatever has happened in the society, if you have a constant feeling that you're discriminated in the Finnish society, that affects how you see the arts and culture sector as well. And that may lead to kind of a self-discrimination um, practices that you start limiting your own opportunities because you think that you will not be accepted in the sector anyway. There is racialization and there is racism. And racism was a word that um, hardly anyone used in our interviews, and it was really rarely um, uh, written in the survey answers either. But if we kind of took a closer look of what the foreign born professionals were describing what they are facing, um, what they are facing is racism. That is basically um, what it falls under the category. Um, there is there hasn't been so much um, information about the status of foreign born professionals, but what we can gather from bits and pieces and surveys from before, all these problems have been identified before. So in that level, there's really nothing new in these findings. And, and then why is that? That is the question. Why is there not been enough development? And here are a few um, key points that I would like to bring out that we think maybe is the reason for this. Um, so is it a question of uh, money? We say yes and no based on our research. This is a quote um, again from Turku City Theatre, but it doesn't really matter that it's a, it's a theatre, it just um, is about um, the steering effect of funding. So funding always steers. Ultimately, we do things that get funding. So in this case, when we're speaking about expanding somewhere or creating something new, if there's distinctly separate funding for it, it of course steers and activates everyone to do it. And the reality is that many organizations, um, they are small, especially in the museum sector, and they have very tight budgets. They don't have the opportunity to hire many new people. So in that case, if there is more money, um, this situation might uh, come a bit easier as well. And that's why we do recommend that the Ministry of Education and Culture should create financial incentives inside the government transfer system to encourage and uh, steer the institutions to develop their practices. And that affirmative action should be considered as means um, to enable access to the Finnish cultural sector. But in the end of this quote, uh, this person says, when it's integrated into what we normally do, it's not so much a question of money, but more about seeing possibilities. So how do you get um, from the fact that it's not a question of money anymore to see that it's possibilities and that it becomes a normal thing to do? Um, there is the question of competence on cultural diversity. Uh, we asked uh, the museums, theatres and orchestras uh, whether they have the sufficient knowledge to take cultural and linguistic diversity into account in their operations. Um, and here are the, the results. In, in green, you can see the ones that uh, said yes, and in, in red, the ones that said no. But regardless of this, around fourth of the institution had actually had training on cultural and linguistic diversity, and nearly half of all orchestra died up directors saw no need for training, and nearly two thirds of theatre directors couldn't say if it might be needed. Um, in addition, um, it was clear that cultural diversity is often understood at international activities. Uh, it has a natural link with it, but we're not really talking about international activities now, we're talking about the cultural diversity within the Finnish society. And that recognizing discriminatory practices is very difficult, it's, it's uncomfortable as well, but it's very difficult. And therefore, we do recommend that there's a need for further training and knowledge regarding cultural diversity, equality and anti-racism, its vocabulary theories and practices in the cultural institution and in public administration, 
and that more training is needed to develop an understanding of the structures and mechanisms that create discriminatory practices. Then there's also cultural diversity as, as a strategy. And we found out that cultural diversity is very rarely linked in the organization strategies in the development of the organization or human resources. Um, it might be there um, in some aspect of the organization's work, but it's hardly ever linked with the development or human resources. So it's not completely fully included in the operations of, uh, of the organization. There is a short of equality plans. Uh, uh, there are equality plans that have been made, but not enough also by those who have uh, the legal obligation to do so. There is a lack of accessible information and cultural diversity is very often advanced through specific measures rather than mainstreaming. There again, we recommend um, that there's a need for reassessment of recruitment practices, terms used in the recruitment process, decision-making criteria, and language requirements from the point of view of equality and transparency. The Ministry of Education and Culture and the agencies working under it um, should systematically collect information regarding the promotion of cultural diversity um, and equality from the funded organization and hold them accountable. And this would be, this is something that we found out as well that it's very difficult to follow where we are at the moment and how cultural diversity has kind of evolved um, because we just lack systematic information um, about the subject. And finally, there's a very difficult uh, um, topic that I will uh, try to articulate. Um, while we were analyzing uh, the data, it was very obvious to us that um, not enough process have, has been happening uh, in the Finnish arts and culture sector within the past years or a decade maybe. And we were wondering why, why is it? Um, there's a, um, according to the interviews and the service, there's a lot of goodwill from the directors, from, um, from the arts and culture sector. Um, there has been very good practices and operations within the past years. Um, there's a lot of good intention, but why is it not enough? And why um, do foreign born arts and culture professionals still feel that they are constantly discriminated in the sector? And this is from an article by Tanya Kanas. Uh, diversity is a white word. And this kind of summarizes a little bit what we came up with or we thought that what might be one of the problem um, that we are kind of missing the opportunity to reimagine um, the sector and the power structures. The diversity is quick responses to stage diversity rather as an opportunity to reimagine the entire sector. Uh, diversity is restricted to aesthetic presentation rather than a meaningful, committed, resourced, long-term process of shifting existing power dynamics. Um, and in the, the article, it says, uh, the diversity seeks to make sense through the white lens of differences by creating, curating, and demanding relatable definitions of diversity, but only in the relation of what it means in terms of whiteness. And therefore, the diversity discourse within the cultural sector um, has only created flames by which diversity is given permission to exist under conditional inclusion. So are we doing something wrong in a way that we are adding or doing just adds on in, instead of really imagine, reimagining the sector? Uh, and therefore, um, how to move on now it is really vital that um, the persons, uh, in this case, foreign born persons, but persons with a foreign background, people uh, faced by racialization, are fully included in the process of really uh, making things better and reimagining the, the entire sector. I will um, finish here. Here are um, direct links to our um, publication, both av fully available in English and Finnish on our website. Thank you.
Thank you, Emmy. It was a lot of revelations to me. As okay, you always learn new things. I always learn new things when I'm listening to you. So I hope everybody else had moments of revelations as well. And um, yes, we are going to have a short break and um, about, about 20 minutes. And we serve snacks outdoors and uh, out of this um, hall. And uh, also you can, there are the restrooms and everything. But I would like to point out that please come back in time as this is online. So even though it says in the program that we start at 14.05, so please come in already, 14.00. Would that be okay with you? Okay, and Satu is... Yeah, uh, yeah, true. We are staying here, but still, yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So please, uh, let's have a break. And if you mingle, so um, it would be very polite for to wear the mask when talking to other people. Thank you. Okay, everybody, we are continuing, you beautiful people, here at the Ateneo Misali and online as well. And the next person presenting is uh, Keme Pellise. She is an artist and a cultural worker, and she has been with the Globe Art Point from the truly almost from the beginning. And she has very good insights in this report we have been pre pre presented by Emmy and now Keme will on the behalf of Globe Art Point and from our perspective take some points and Keme please <laughs> we have been working together so we are very kind of tight we have been a tight team and she's a super person I mean okay <laughs> Hi. So, um, of course, uh, today I'm here um, on behalf of Global Point, but I'm I'm asked to speak as an artist, um, as a cultural worker. I believe that I'm here today because of both my multiple identities and my transversal connection with this report. A great report, which. Um, I think the process of making it has been a growing opportunity and a journey of discovery for all people involved. As you know, this report is part of the more extensive project opening, becoming an agent in the field of arts and culture in Finland, implemented by Ecopore, Culture for All and Global Point, where I was the coordinator. I dropped it from this project because I applied myself to receive formation as a diversity agent um, by Culture for All, and I achieved it. I'm also happy to see many of my colleagues here today. Um, but nevertheless, this report deals with the study of me, of my peers and me here in Finland. So I need to say that I am much more than a target group. I am the sum of my multiplicities, and I am a professional, able to combine many hats. I'm a visual artist and a poet, and I am a cultural agent who believes in social justice, so therefore tries to act accordingly. I, just to be clear and on the same page, I say social justice, preferring justice in terms of distribution of wealth, opportunities, privileges, within the society. On a very personal, very, very personal level, um, some discoveries of this research are emotionally taxing. Make no mistake, uh, when my peers and I must exist in rooms where we are the topic 
or refer to as if we will be even there, it is always onerous. Um, luckily, we are incredibly overskilled and resourceful. And also, I want to say that Besides that, I have a very good feeling today and about this report and the work that we are doing, I'm hopeful. As a cultural agent, I choose to see those findings as something almost cartographic, an actualized map on which we can actually draw a map, a route that will move us towards social justice, towards this justice. I use the term justice, even it might sound a bit too big for some people, I hope not, because uh, even the report says cultural diversity was viewed in the project only from the perspective of foreign born arts and culture professionals. But we must consider that the same structures in our institutions that produce discrimination regarding languages or nationality are perpetuating discrimination about gender, sexual identity, etc. So I understand that talking of more blurry concepts like diversity, accessibility, or equality, it is less uncomfortable than address concrete problems by their name, like racism, ableism, unearned privilege, et cetera. But however, we just can't build a fairer system by addressing them. And I say also our, our institutions, we, with capital letters, as I believe that separating ourselves, we just hinder our very efforts. It worries me when I read that indeed cultural diversity was mostly visible only in the specific areas of the institutions, opera institutions operations where they could benefit from it. That confirms my own experience where I have been often asked to help an institution to work uh, with diversity. But what I was really asked was to work in audience development. I have worked with little and large structures uh, here in Finland and abroad, and I never found a way of doing an efficient, diverse audience outreach and programming without doing first a process of learning and adapt in the core structure of the institution and within their personal. So the challenge never was to reach or increase the cultural diversity. We already live in a rich and varied culture. Diversity is everywhere. The effort is how to stop living in this semi-denial status and embrace, embrace reality on an institutional level, how to do it together. I agree with Martina Marti when she says, quote, the resistance was not towards cultural diversity itself, but towards a change in the way of operating as an institution, unquote. So I believe one essential step in a roadmap must be to normalize change from the individual practice to the system. Or hold our hands and jump, basically. I repeat, it's time for action. Let's move. As Sheida berg Suderblum writes, we know that the implementation of cultural diversity and inclusion is a long process. We know. So we have no time to lose. The research says, Sufficient progress has not been made. So the feeling of being stuck or getting late is valid. We must deal with it. Luckily, this paper as a map is an opportunity to move, to take action, to refuel and continue. We are wiser now, more experienced, more woke. We have had time to practice uncomfortability, openness, how to give and receive feedback and how to work side by side. So let's focus on the how. As an artist, you learn how to work with the materials you already have. I will say that as a cultural worker too, you do too. So can our field do it? I would like to challenge the structure, gatekeepers, decision makers, us to do so. The good news 
is that we have an overstock of supplies to work with. We have people, experts, and I include myself here, as I include many of you here today. We have projects, associations, umbrellas associations, working groups, physical and online spaces. We have already created several, several sets of recommendations to implement and tools to do so. Also, many of us have already been working together between us and or with uh, official structures. And we have produced solid foundations on top to build so others don't need to start all over again. Intersectional bridges and meeting points with multidirectional access. Priceless specific knowledge on ethics, methodologies and practicalities of both cooperating and implementing. An experience, experience, and by trying, failing and trying again, the opportunity for others not to commit the same mistakes. These are the materials we already have. So I am extending an invitation to use them efficiently. If you are not, work with us. Allow us to affect the structures in which we are placed. Penalizing tokenization as much as tailor made calls. Allocating the necessary money during all the necessary time to those who are already delivering, centering and supporting the experiences and asks of people most affected by oppression, and pulling out from those who are not meeting the standards that our actual and diverse society demands, stopping those who still work under the premise of diversity, equality, and accessibility as their theme or project is instead of fin finally internalizing it in their core structure. We are not supposed to know what we don't know, yet culture is plural. We choose this field and we are duty bounded to learn and update our practice to be able to function in the reality we live in. So now we know Thank you for both confirming my assumptions and also to make me confront them with this report. We have actual data asking us to grow our capacity to learn, shift, change and respect each other. To do social justice, we have the means. We are already here and we are connected. So how are we doing it? Thank you. Thank you, Heather Keve. It has, you showed again what Global Point is made of. There is a lot of intelligent, capable people knowing what to do and how to do. And let's, let's activate ourselves. And now the panel is starting and we are activating a lot of people. The, the banner panel is... Um, moderated by Sebide Raha and she is uh, our vice chair at the Global Point and she is an artist, researcher and a passionate person to deal with these matters. So uh, everybody, let's enjoy the panel and Sebide will present the panelists. So this is, this is now the panel. Hello everyone and welcome on my own behalf and Global Point again. And I'm very happy today to have a pleasure to moderate the very important discussion that many people have been waiting over a year to happen. And uh, today we have Minna Karbonen, who works as director of the division for art and cultural heritage at the Ministry of Education and Culture. Before joining the ministry in 2007, she has served as head of department of museum sector development and knowledge management at the Finnish uh, Heritage Agency. Mina is permanent advisor in the working group on cultural policy, immigration and cultural diversity appointed by the, by the Ministry of Education and Culture January this year. Please Mina.
And we have uh, Paula Tuovinen, who has been the director of the Arts Promotion Center Finland, known as Taike, since May 2018. Prior, prior to that, she was the vice rector of the University of Arts Helsinki and director of the Theater Academy. Tuovinen has a master's degree in philosophy, majoring in cultural and anthropology, and has been a freelance dancer, choreographer, and teacher since 1982. Please. Uh... Also, we have Tom Milaitio, who is the executive director of culture and leisure for the city of Helsinki, previously a journalist, community activist, and most recently the director of youth affairs of Helsinki. Lightio is now responsible for cultural affairs, libraries, sports, and youth services. He has been um, leading the conversation of the new model for citizen, citizen engagement in Helsinki. Lightio is also a member of board of the University of Helsinki. Please come to that. And finally, we have also Jada Berg Soderblom. As an independent cultural entrepreneur, manager, curator, and festival programmer based in Helsinki. With more than 18 years of experience, she has worked as the programmer of international festival with close ties to the world renowned um, institutions, orchestras, artists, and ensemble. She has founded Mikola Gard Arts, sorry if I mis mispronounce, <laughs> to facilitate, connect, and promote transnational collaboration with a, spe a specific focus on diversity and inclusion. Jada is a public advocate of diversity and inclusion in Finland and currently chairperson of the association Gelob Art Point. She is a member of the Working Group on Cultural Policy, Im Immigration and Cultural Diversity appointed by the Ministry of Education and Culture January this year. Yes, please. Uh, I would like uh, very briefly uh, to mention that today's discussion will be very much focused on the results of the report. Thank you, Emmy, for also presenting it uh, for all of us today very briefly. And also I would like to say that we will have a chance of uh, Q&A questions or comments in the end of the discussion, possibly for 20 minutes. Today also I will be the bad person who keeps very strictly the timing in order that everybody will be given equal chance of uh, expression on the questions. Very, very, very few questions that I prepare. So I will also try to moderate the Q&A in the end. So yes, um, my first question to get into um, the topic of today conversation about what's going on in the art field and all this uh, extensive, very well done in depth report that Kupure has made in collaboration with different organization now is that what, are, what is your understanding from organizational point of view regarding this report and its result? There has been, like very briefly, I can say that this report has been very much focused on the um, recruitment, the issue of the recruitment of professional workers, because it happens a lot that uh, uh, many, many art institutions are very focused on the audience part, but uh, this report was particularly focused on the recruitment of artists. How do you find the results of this report and from the organizational point of view, if you can elaborate for us? Everybody will be given more or less five minutes or you can take your liberty and just share your views with us. Thank you. Who wants to? Tommy, would you like to? <laughs> challenge one. Um, good afternoon, everyone. So I look at this issue, both kind of from a municipal point of view, like we are, in a way, providing grants for cultural organizations, and we are running cultural services ourselves. So kind of two roles. Um, I, I read this summer this book that's been quite popular in the US this the, for the last year, it's called How to be an anti racist. Uh, by Professor Ibram Kendi. And what Kendi says in this book is that we should approach 
racism and anti-racist practices as kind of as a as a we should use it as a descriptive word for certain policies rather than as a slur to describe people and organizations mm -hmm. and and i i I, th I think that there's a lot of truth in that that there i think a lot of our practices and how we recruit people at the moment are are racist um i i do think that there's a and we are we have the ability to turn them to towards a more anti-racist ap approach I'm, i don't think that many of them are intentionally racist i think that's the that's the thing here and i think what what was also presented in the in the in the in the study that there's a lot of well-intentioned practice here but i think we also have to be very open and and honest that this is a question of power yes. in a way to make room for new people someone needs to step back and he also it's a i think we should we should approach recruiting as a kind of a practical issue also like look at the the actual practices and building the competencies in the organization to to look at unconscious bias look at how we evaluate different different applicants i mean there's a there's a lo lot of good examples from from orchestras that was mentioned earlier on how this kind of playing behind a, a, a cover or or a wall creates different results so we should try to approach this issue more as a kind of as a pragmatic issue on how we change the the actual practices that we carry out on a daily or monthly basis kind of going back to the question of how and there's a lot of things that I think that the cultural sector can adopt from other sectors as well. Uh, there's a lot of things that, for instance, the, the startup world, the tech, tech world has adopted in recruiting when, when they've had to find new people. Um, so we have to, I think we as funders can push more, in a way, push the cultural organizations and push ourselves as well to change our practices. For instance, if I, if I take an example of the city, I do think that it, for many positions, our, our language criteria are too, too tough. I think many, in many jobs, we could approach this issue in a more prax practical way that, that reasonable Finnish would be enough. And then we would support people in learning language, like learning the language as, as they work. Yes. And I think that would open doors for a lot of people. Yes. Absolutely, I agree with you. Um, Minna, would you like? Okay, hello everybody. My first mistake is to speak after you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean, what's left? Um, first of all, I have to say like from the bottom of my heart that this report is so very, very good. It's, it's kind of full filled with details, uh, information, uh, statistics, uh, really, really nice touch. And I don't want to go into in a way details because we have read it. The thing that happened to me, although you said that we, I mean, we should come from our the perspective of, of what would be represent here, I'm from the ministry, was this kind of echo that was like kind of, you know, I had to listen to it when I was reading the report just yesterday again, and the echo is the echo of, of kind of, you know, well, what is, what's the tone underneath? Uh, what are the attitudes and prejudice? Uh, uh, what is the otherness? What are the values that we actually see and understand or misunderstand? Uh, how much oversimplification there is still when we talk about these matters. Uh, who am I really? And then uh, when I kind of listened to Emmy and that kind of really like eye-opening way of descri describing how we did the research, I think that was fantastic. And I think that I've never ever heard that before in the same way because this was kind of this openness and honesty of kind of, you know, well, at the same time we are doing this, well, we have to question kind of ourselves, the way we see things, who we are really, where we, what we stand for, uh, what we should do really, and how we should do that. 
So it was somehow so astonishing as a process for myself as well to read the report, to think about myself reading the report, to hear the people who have actually done the report to explain how it is here. So I I've first maybe first time for years, I, I, I kind of, you know, I, I find it hard to find the right words to explain kind of what, what this means to, to me. Maybe I'm, well, one of the civil servants at the ministry. I'm director of, of one of the units. Uh, in a way, I think that the information is not the thing that we lack now. I think that we should kind of dig even deeper to the values and to kind of, you know, what kind of society living we live in. And at the same time to really, really find uh, practical solutions because we are actually talking about things that are quite often unintentional when you think about kind of, you know, what kind of structures and practices we now have. Are, are they discriminating? If so, how? But to kind of, you know, to, to, to really have, again, patience for this kind of continuous dialogue uh, and to really think, well, I mean, who are we really? Who should be involved? How we are going to do this together? Because the, the society is changing, the values are there somewhere. Uh, policy making becomes more and more difficult because of lack of actually funding money. So we should kind of, you know, well, this is us. And I have this kind of vision that we could actually really mainstream many things and not at the same time lose the, the message of, of, of the wrong kind of equality, you know, the, 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 the big beautiful picture of Finland for everybody, uh, which isn't really in reality the way Finland is for everybody. I, I like the focus in the report a lot and then again, I, I found myself thinking about kind of, you know, all kinds of factors that more or less um, contribute to what a person is or isn't. And I think that all those factors really matter, not only, only being a foreign born artist or cultural professional, but also question of, of class, uh, gender, uh, origin, of course, education, age, disability, uh, gender identity, gender expression, all these things matter and, and, and may, may make a combination which can be explosive sometimes. Thank you. Paula, would you like? Okay. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, I'm a structure person, so I want to, to speak about the structures that yes. are actually making uh, the situation worse than it could be, actually. And there was nothing surprising for me in the, in the report. Um, I think that the situation in Finland is very dif different if you think of the big institutions and if you think of the freelancing that uh, we have in arts and culture, so it depends very much on what what the situation is. Uh, but if we talk about these bigger institutions, so the the problem is the funding structure that we have. So it's not allowing uh, enough flexibility. There is no plat enough platforms where. Uh, the diversity could happen more. So the funding is very rigid and there is no criteria. It's, it's not mm. quite because it's specific money. And I think we can't use time here to explain what the system is, mm. but is this, you have heard the word force, mm. um, but actually it does not have criteria because it's certain type of state funding for municipalities. And that makes it very difficult to uh, renew the system because the funding structure is like that. And it makes the institutions, uh, the working methods are not easily changed because of the funding system. And, but of course, it's, 
it's um, depends also on people, but it's very difficult to change because of the funding system. Uh, may I ask why there is no criteria for the spending of the money? Yeah, it's uh, because it's based on a basic, mainly it's based on the um, on the people, how many people are working in an mm. institution. And there is not really criteria if we if we compare it to, for example, universities that have a different funding method. They have a very, very specific criteria for funding and it's for all the universities the same, the same uh, criteria or same kind of uh, understanding of how how the funding is uh, allocated. But is it is it referring to the non-discriminatory act, the Finnish uh, the Finnish law on non that there has to be thirty uh, an organization should have thirty workers, no, or is is it some some no, other no, regulation? No, the criteria means that uh, there is one part of the money is allocated uh, according to the, for mm. example, in universities according mm. to masters uh, degrees that are uh, given from a certain university. And so there is also a quality criteria for mm -hmm. uh, maybe quality of the operation, everyday operations. Yes. For example, there we could have a criteria, how do you uh, recruit yes. your uh, people? But, uh, but this kind of criteria is not possible to create in this, these bigger institutions. And of course, I have to say that the, the system is very different if we compare music, where it's a very, very internationally high, high it's very com, com, competitive yes. world. Mm. And that's why 16% of the Finnish orchestras have a, a foreign born uh, musicians. But if we think of theaters, it's very diff different. And it's also about the aesthetics. It's not only the, it's the structures, but the structures don't allow uh, the change. Uh, so the aesthetics also is the same, very much the same. And that's also one problem. Because if the aesthetics is not, uh, there's no diversity enough, then mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't allow so much foreign born artists to uh, perform, for example. But I believe that at least personally, that every structure there is a chance. There is a chance to work for change. So it's not. We should not look at the structure as a fixed. Yes. If it's okay, we continue with Jada, yes. and then I have a specific question for each one of you that you can very concretely address. Jada, would you look but like to also elaborate uh, your own point you. of thank view? Thank you. Thank you for the comments, and he hello everybody. Uh, of course, it's a kind of masterpiece 162 pages well done once again uh, and the report gives a complete overview so i'm not going to repeat things but we need to just uh, elaborate the things that we need to discuss first of all it shows that the current structure fails to provide equal opportunities for the underrepresented minorities in general. Of course, it focuses on foreign-born art makers, but including, not limited, uh, all underrepresented minorities in terms of employment, funding possibilities, and possible professional growth. So this is a fact we need to accept. And then we need to read, I believe, the report from the Kozan Effect lenses means that it identifies the barriers and it shows the shortcomings of the current system. So, I mean, um, even the researchers <clears throat> suggested solution. We need to just remove the obstacles and uh, somehow correct the shortcomings of the structure and renovate, change and update the system. This is what we need to do. But I would like to a little bit bring the big picture for us just to remind where we are and which kind of values that we are surrounded in Finland. If persons with foreign background work in lower level positions, in some cases we have been given example uh, as the logistic work, unlikely to be employed. So we cannot talk about an equal society at large, first thing first. And if foreign language speakers make up right now 16%, I believe, in the Helsinki metropolitan area and will grow by 28 by 2035, 
And if they are not represented in the cultural institutions, even to a small extent, and, and of course, if you look at the orchestra's management uh, parts, we don't see any foreign born workers they have on the stage, that's for sure. But we cannot talk about democratic participation. So, I mean, if the art scene that we are operating in just governed, created and distributed predominantly by Finnish uh, professionals, and if there are very few structures to empower underrepresented minorities, of course, we cannot talk about social justice. I think Kim also mentioned the same thing. So therefore, we need to really focus on the big picture and understand that the actions and the solutions that we will come up has something to do with the values that we promote in the Finnish society. So it's not about fixing a possible job for a foreign born uh, maker. It's about democracy, equality, justice, and how these values are being uh, experienced by everyone living in the society. I just want to emphasize the profile of the respondents of the artists survey, uh, this foreign background, that, uh, because it's important just to remember that, and I'm quoting from the report, 74% are between 25 and 44 years old, 80% lives in the metropolitan area, 52% has an upper university degree and defined as overqualified, 30% had degrees both from Finland and another country, and with average of seven years of work history in Finland, based on self-evaluation, 42% has fairly or very good Finnish language skills. So we are talking about highly educated, skilled people during the most productive years of their professional life who have been excluded by the scene and have never given equal opportunities to grow and contribute in the best possible way in the society. We should see that. And we must, we must, of course, see the untapped capacity of dimension people. And the question comes, does Finland have such luxury to not to use this existing capacity? I think this is the most important question that we should ponder. And if you, of course, if you look at the, the already made efforts through the Talent Boost program and the answer comes immediately, no, we don't have such luxury. And I would like to also put three main issues that I see in the report. First of all, this narrow definition of participation. It's only seen from yes, the audience perspective. Yes, sorry for interruption. Yes, exactly. <laughs> because the report is on participation of professional workers. Yeah. It's not really on audience professionals. Yeah. Yeah. So we need to participation. We need to really define participation in following levels. Participation in the workforce means that staffing and working culture of the institutions, decision-making structures, boards and leadership, content, of course, where orchestras and musicians are uh, considered, artistic output, collections, exhibitions, research, publications, so on. And of course, we all are audience when we buy a ticket as an audience engagement. This is the main issue. And the second, basically, we have quite institutionalized and discriminative structure, as uh, mentioned and proved by the report. So I believe that all publicly funded institutions, including national institutions, should, uh, should reconsider the fundamental role they play in the society. If you have very few seconds. And okay, okay, I will just make it very clear. And they have to really follow these questions. Whom are these institutions for? Uh, what are they responsible for? To whom? they should be accountable. And of course, as Paula said, we have insufficient allocation of the funding, means that the existing structure uh, leaves diversity and inclusion as an issue to be dealt if and when organizations given extra money. So funding structure favors only its own institutions, and of course, without any further focus for growth and further collaborations in general. Thank you. Okay, I, uh, now I will have like uh, individual questions that you can more, most likely like take your time and answer those questions. I mean, my question for you is that the uh, city of Helsinki recently has published its new vision 2030. And we know that uh, the population is changing and in the next 10 to 15 upcoming years, at least in metropolitan area, there will be 
approximately 28% of uh, population who are not uh, speaking uh, only uh, in Finnish and Swedish, but other languages. How the city is planning, what sort of uh, immediate action and the strategies the city of Helsinki is going to take to achieve the recruitment. I would like to, to read for, for you here that, for instance, I pick up from the vision that the action plans of cultural operators will take into account that the city is becoming increasingly diverse and multilingual. These are from the vision. Uh, the language requirements in the city's recruitment will be examined from the perspective of promoting diversity in the cultural field. And considering that 80% uh, of the survey respondents as artists and cultural workers also are currently located in Helsinki. Would you explain a slightly, you will have like more or less three minutes. <laughs> Um, so your question was like how... What does, immediate yeah, actions and strategies city is planning to take into consideration? Well, I mean, I think we can, we can approach this from multiple directions. I think if, if, we, if we look at recruiting practices and the quality of recruiting in general, mm -hmm. I think if we would actually, every time we open a recruitment, we start recruiting a new person, if we would pay slightly more attention on what are we looking for, we would build the criteria more carefully than we do at the moment. Uh, we would make sure that when we conducted an interview that we evaluate the people in an equal way after the interview and that we would, we would have unconscious bias training for our managers and, and people who do recruiting. I think we would do, we would do better recruiting yes. for everyone. Yes. Um, so that's kind of one issue. The, the one, so, proposal that has come out already is that we are looking at the mission and the focus of the city art museum so the Helsinki art museum yes and we've just published a report that says that the, in the future the Helsinki art museum needs to needs to focus more on the characteristics of Helsinki art and Helsinki like the artistic landscape of Helsinki um, and it needs to act more as a as a gatherer and a mediator for also disagreements in the in the art scene, so we see that that's kind of a function of a of a public public art and a Helsinki Art Museum, a city-run art museum, and that we need to increase diversity in in both of our our what what we display and who do we who do we recruit. So that's kind of the first thing that that has come out. What about language? Because language is one of the most uh, common barrier for all these uh, survey respondents. They mentioned that language has created the discriminatory practices within the field. When the, the information, we all understand when the information is not accessible, mm -hmm. then how many applicants will be possibly with foreign background to apply? Because many of the directors also, they said they cannot reach diverse background artists or cultural workers with diverse background. Also, the issue was pointed out through research that the information is not available through certain channel it has been shared, or it's very heavy Finnish or Swedish uh, language in heavy Finnish or Swedish. Hmm. Would you? I think it's easier to fix in, in service delivery roles. But when yeah. we go to, as you pointed out, when you, when you go to higher offices and um, then there's legal obstacles for, for changing the language criteria for certain positions. Absolutely. But I think we can do most of our positions in our organization, curators, uh, cultural producers in cultural centers, they are not positions where we couldn't be slightly more flexible. So I'm, I'm very open to, mm -hmm. to looking at, at opening the language criteria and really investing more in language training for our staff. Um, what about like language, uh, like employment and recruitment and language can be a slight, a slowly learned through. Yeah, that's what I mean. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Jada, would you like to? Well, actually, I was just checking the notes and thank you very much. This is very nice vision and we are, I think, as an organization, try to uh, contribute when we are invited for the English workshop. Uh, but as, uh, a main question still remains when these kind of visions and plans are being made, uh, the 
a role of uh, foreign-born or immigrant backgrounded people because usually those working groups and planners uh, have quite homogeneous uh, Finnish uh, profile in that sense and in at the end uh, the situation comes uh, we are talking about uh, 2030 where the non-local language speakers will be almost 30 percent and will hopefully live in this vision prepared for them not exactly with them well i mean one thing that we're doing as well is that we are we've kind of reviewed the the focus of, of the cultural center Kaisa um, and our view now is that Kaisa will focus more it will be more like a competence center for the whole art scene in Helsinki mm -hmm. on, on questions of cultural diversity and diversity in general um, so rather than it being uh, and I have to be very delicate when I choose my words yes um, <laughs> so it would be kind of rather than we having kind of a segregationist policy where we have one place for so-called international artists. Uh, we now focus more on guys are building the competence first in our own services, but then also in the cultural scene in Helsinki as well. I, Katja Suomalainen and Pedrosa, who's now the director, is really committed to this. We also know that it's not easy work, and I want to want to say that out loud. It, we all it, when, agree on that. When we when mm. we start raising issues of unconscious bias, mm. on there you face a lot of kind of uh, pushback, and and the discussions turn quite emotional very quickly. But I think the people in this room are fairly familiar with that. Mm. So I'm 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 saying that it can be done overnight, and I also think that. We also can't, as a city, we wouldn't be a responsible funder also and a grant maker if we would change our standards overnight. So if we want to push, let's say, cultural diversity and diversity more into the criteria of our grant making, we need to also invest in competence training for the whole staff. We can't just like overnight decide that we are evaluating grants in a different way and expect that people do more work with the same money. So we this are is really, under a standard. Yeah, so we're now looking at how we could build that competence and we're really happy to talk about Thank partnerships you. around that. Thank you so much. We, I think, I believe that, I would believe that uh, no person in this room would think that uh, cultural diversity, and actually I would point it out, the real inclusion of underrepresented uh, active workers is achieved through over, <laughs> over the night. So we all are in the same understanding. That's why we are together to see what sort of a structural change are needed, what are, what are our tools and what are our means. Thanks. And Nina, um, I think it was uh, through Emmy's uh, presentation that you mentioned, re let's reimagine the entire sector rather than stage the diversity as like, a, as you also mentioned about this image or facade of diversity through having flags and pictures and so on and so forth. Uh, as in the, as in, in the report also, it reads that uh, diversity and inclusion, when it comes to, to the director's expression in, the, in their survey, it seems to be something outside the organization, or it is realized through a small projects or targeted to the small groups. I can read through the, to the actual, from the reports that, it is only rarely incorporated into personal management or organizational development, and even in the content of the activities. And uh, when it comes to diversity, institutions are focused on a very specific and often, often a small group as a separate project which uh, also was brought up multiple times in this report. And apparently, as also Emmy mentioned, in the year 2010, 11, 13, 14, and currently 2020, these issues, as Paolo, you also mentioned, is not a new issue, the problem and this uh, structural issues or problem in the way of recruitment. And I would like to read it as it reads in the report that it is justified to ask why the previous observations have not led to improvement in the situation from ministerial point of view. As you also mentioned that it is really important to mainstream some, some certain criteria when it comes to the national 
uh, institutions or publicly funded institution. Could you elaborate a slightly? How do you see why there hasn't been a concrete change happening? <laughs> cool. Thank you for your question, which was has this kind of a slightly negative tone. <laughs> Sorry so how for do that. I explain <laughs> our big mistakes at the, <laughs> at the <laughs> ministry and in the government. I wouldn't go into that because I can see the trap. Would you like but, to? But I, I, I try to elaborate. Uh, uh, I, I, I see this kind of, uh, th there's a danger in, 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 in kind of thinking that, well, since we understand what, where, I mean, where the problem is, so it's hiding in a corner. So let's, let's create new criteria. And I just like, like to add something to what Paula said about uh, kind of state funding. Yes, we have this kind of um, boss uh, system funding, which is a, a transfer system mm -hmm. based on, on, on actual costs and uh, person years. And then we have state subsidies, uh, which is another thing. Uh, it might be easier in a way to create criteria for state subsidies. And for some we have created, but at the same time, my point is this, I, I think that we should be very, very careful with not creating too shallow criteria because they just mm -hmm. look good but do, do they mean anything in reality? If I think about the piles of applications that we have at the Ministry of Education and Culture and people are really, really kind of, you know, doing their best. Mm -hmm. So will it make a difference if the criteria isn't good enough? I think that's one of the things that we have to kind of not in, jump into this kind of conclusion. Well, this is the solution for us mm -hmm. and then we're done. It. So I, I think that's not the way to go. Uh, the, or not the only way to go. Uh, at the Ministry of Education and Culture, and, you know, and like all ministries, we have this th kind of, you know, the ways we can handle things. One is legislation, then we have funding, then we have this kind of strategic steering. Uh, and what I'm kind of, you know, really, uh, I have high hopes when it comes to the the working group that was mentioned uh, just before this panel, uh, uh, appointed by the, the by the ministry, and uh, it will certainly give us proposals of, of of what we should do at the policy level. And we have still some months to go. And from my point of view, again, I'm biased. I know. I think that that working group is very heterogeneous. So we try to really create like true conversations, a true dialogue, try to understand what we are actually tackling here. And, and I, I really hope that the ideas or proposals for policy guidelines are not oversimplified because that is the danger. And I think that we are all kind of all ears in really listening to what we will have in our hands in maybe January, was it January, end of this year or January, and see how we can kind of, you know, continue to have a, 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 a program. And at the same time saying this, I really don't want to see as a future for the government to have these kind of programs of almost like an isolation. So we have mm -hmm. this thing, now we are go going to cope this thing with this program, with these special funds. Now we have this thing for only this. So, I mean, stick in your box, stay there. I mean, we are not interested. The thing that I want to see happening is mainstreaming, but I don't know about all the ways all the means we are going to use for that since I don't have the proposals from that working group and I try to respect their voices and not to kind of, you know, be here and say, well, this is what we want. Uh, we have decided beforehand and we just wait for the guys and, uh, and all those people there to, to say something, but doesn't, doesn't interest me really. It does. That's the voice I'm going to, to, to listen and we are going to listen and, and, and the politicians as well. So that will yes. be the way forward. Thank you so much. Jada, would you like? 
Uh, sorry, Paula, but yes. I, I wanted <laughs> to please. Okay, I wanted yes. to respond that as being a member of that uh, mentioned group, and I'm the only non-Finnish speaker, and I, I have my own interpretation. So language is not a barrier. If there is a will, I, I would like to say it. And of course, we as a working group, I cannot um, talk on behalf of them, but I, I can easily say that I believe uh, we really would like to see the time and investment and the uh, thought which we gather through some workshops will turn into a kind of action. But a general question uh, I, I think still remains, what happens to those reports? I mean, <laughs> I mean, working groups are, are being worked and I think it's a brilliant idea to have uh, people from the makers, from the system to take them and their knowledge and, and practices into the ministry and turn those ideas into report, but then next. Because if you look at all the research and everything, main problems, main solutions have been mentioned and maybe there is not much have been done. And one uh, idea would be, of course, to think about the uh, profile of those working groups, because usually uh, we are ending up in a situation that uh, foreign-born or immigrant backgrounded people are invited or selected if the team of working group has something to do, either cultural diversity or integration or immigration then we are given an isolated place and we are only have to deal with these things. Uh, for instance, one example, since Paolo is Very also briefly, here, uh, there is an indicative guidelines for arts report in 2019, 50 pages. I read it very good work, thank you. Uh, but if you look at the working group, there was not a representation. It was quite homogeneous Finnish uh, professionals. Of course, there are no leaders in the institutions, therefore there is no uh, people in the working group, that's for sure. Uh, but equity and inclusion as a term never mentioned in the 50 pages and diversity as Avos report also referred to only just mentioned quite, uh, let's say, uh, roughly and cultural diversity not explicitly mentioned because the working group members most probably are not concerned about diversity and inclusion like us because this is our life. And the, the sole this problem would be to include diversity and inclusion or expert people from those organizations, concerned organizations, professionals with this expertise in all working groups. Otherwise, we are exactly ended up what you are not trying to end up. Isolated problems for isolated people. And of course, uh, now it's going on, the working group is working for very good ideas, but at the same time, there is another renovation working group for the WOS, and we don't know if there will be a communication about that. Thank you. As an example, Yes, sorry. we may come back again to, to that. Considering, Paula, that Taike plays such a significant role on the life and work of uh, all artists in Finland, in general, both regional and overall, um, how do you see the ideas and representation of the foreign-born workers or professionals in these working groups at Taike or overall, generally? Would be really nice to have your insight on that? Mm, well, I think that um, if we have solutions to these bigger structural problems, then, then we, will <laughs> serve, we will serve every customer of the Minister of Culture and, and Education. Uh, because they, for example, um, I have to say this now, that, uh, because artist work is not considered work in Finland, even though we have a very, very high level education in Finland, which we also have uh, many international students there. But when uh, the students come out from this very high level education, mm -hmm. there is a re really big gap after that which also, because there are no structures in the small and middle size, there's no small and middle size uh, funded platforms where people could get salaries and could get some kind of uh, organizational work where to kind of grow to these, uh, for example, to, to be able to, to, to work in the ministry. And I think that in the long run, uh, all civil servants who are working in the ministries 
should have a much closer understanding of the servant of the of who they are serving so they should understand it better and kind of grow from the from the field to the to the positions to understand the realities that are in 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 there and um, if we talk if we're talking about these uh, working groups it's it might not be a, a solution, but I, I understand, for example, in our, uh, what, what Teda was uh, saying about that working group, there was no, no uh, foreign born uh, uh, professionals. It's true that, that there, were, there was no, but all the solutions that we were thinking of, I think will serve uh, all artists who are working mm -hmm. in Finland. Um, and uh, if, if we talk about Tigers councils, we have at the moment, we have assessment councils. Um, mm -hmm. There's about 200 people in these all kind of councils, which is uh, a big kind of bureaucratic system, but um, uh, there we have um, diversity. But at the moment, tomorrow, Taiden uh, Wasto, which is the national council for, for the arts is making might be might make a decision for the next councils so they're elected every two years and there are certain councils that didn't find any non-boring foreign-born uh, members and i have been asking why or what was the problem they said that there were no uh, suggestions there was because we asked from a couple of hundreds of organizations who they would they suggest as a member and there were no suggestions yeah, in the report also it yeah. was mentioned or, that... Yeah, because there might be, for example, Pohjois Karjala or certain area mm. of, of Finland. So there, there's no um, um, cultural worker that would be, who is not suge suggested, they don't find person. Or if they find, uh, the persons don't speak Finnish enough. Or Swedish, yeah. Because, or Swedish, or especially Finnish, because what is the work of the council members? They are assessing applications. And in, for example, in the visual council, they get more than 1000 applications and most of them are in Finnish. So they have to assess the applications and compare. So at that moment, it becomes, it might become difficult to, to um, be a member unless you know all the other if you know personally those yes those applicants so those are the problems that we have found but basically we we have to take when we are putting up a council there have to be male female uh, all in between or um, non-binary non <laughs> yes yeah or uh, we have to take care of the for example a council for performing arts they have to be theater people, they have to be circus people, they have to be um, dance people, and they have to be female, male, they have to be uh, certain geographical people and the diversity. So we have, to, we try to, to fill all those. Intersection. All those, yeah. So, but it's not always, we don't always succeed totally, but we, we are trying to do that. Thank you. And the next question for everybody is regarding funding. Because through funding also change can happen, not over the night, but rethinking of already existing resources and funding instruments. Um, my question then again goes for you, Tommy, that um, um, how can you from decision making point of view elaborate um, what measures need to be taken in account in delivering of this funding that city of or municipality of Helsinki has to tackle because economy was one of the biggest dilemma for most of the workers. It's not only uh, an issue for the non finnish born artists, but for everybody. So I'd like to continue from where kind of at least Minna mentioned it that this kind of isolationist versus mainstream mainstreaming approach i do agree with the, with this idea that if we if we put a the threshold on cultural diversity too low on the kind of the what we expect from it, all organizations that get funding from us it actually doesn't generate change 
but at the same time, we know we, we do a lot of collaboration at the moment with Amsterdam and they have a criteria that every single organization that gets cultural funding from the city of Amsterdam needs to have a diversity plan. They need to have, um, they, they need to have assessed their, their audience, their makers and their back office people on, on, on the kind of the, on, on the culture, the kind of diversity as a whole, actually. Um, I think that should be the direction. But as I said earlier, we can change criteria overnight. We have to make sure that we have to invest in investing competent, like kind of capa capacity development in yes. order to make those changes. Um, and we have to understand that these things take then more work from these cultural organizations. Um, Are you also planning to include uh, people with diverse background in this kind of uh, considerations as well? I would imagine that. Yeah, this, this preparation has not started, yes. yeah. to, to be honest. Yes. So, um, it, but it's, um, I think what we do now is that we're looking at the policies that other cities have, have chosen. Yes. Um, Amsterdam is probably the best benchmark for us because it's quite easy for us to work with them. Um, so I think that's kind of the, that's the direction that I would gonna want to go to. Um, and I think there's, uh, what, what is interesting also in Amsterdam is that they, the, the kind of the standards for, for diversity come from the field itself. They are not actually set by the city. So the, the field itself has created a code of conduct that cultural institutions sign on. Mm. And then the city uses that as a criteria for funding. Which is which is a which is not a model that has been used in Finland a lot. So but that I, I I would actually like love to have that discussion with the cultural field on whether the cultural field could in a way, you know, develop the standards that then the city could use as a as a as a criteria for funding. But this this is I'm talking openly. This is not idea. Committed to this. Yes, yeah. thank you, and. Paula, in which way this existing funding stru structure would be sort of uh, reformed or changed that uh, I know that Taike has been, you have been very active at Taike and uh, what are the future plans from this perspective on delivering or sharing of the funding to empower and uh, give capacity to all underrepresented workers in the field, not only to, because from this, I don't want to use the term group because people are so diverse and we are not group. So let's say like how uh, Taike can change this structure of sharing of the money that to give, empower and give capacity to all the workers in the field. Well, at the moment, uh, we, we try to develop things. And uh, one thing that I have, what is very important for, for me is to, to, uh, to make people understand that artistic work is work. And I, we, should, uh, we shouldn't give grants to professional people. It's, may, it's meant for students maybe. But when uh, there is a master of uh, a professional from wherever from the world and comes and work in Finland and when they apply money for their free uh, work, free artistic work, it should be salary and not grant. And I hope to, to make a kind of a um, or kind of a test where we would pay the grant as a salary. So it, it has been possible, so it should be possible. And we, at the moment, we are paying, paying salaries to so-called uh, regional artists, but they are not allowed to do their artistic work, their own artistic work, which is a bit contradictory. But it's totally possible, but uh, it's a lot of, there's a lot of misunderstandings about artistic freedom and about artistic work. And this would be very, very important for migrants for example, if they come and work in Finland, there might be a possibility to, to get this kind of a salary. So they, then they would be working. But if you come and work as, with a grant, so it's very difficult to show that you're actually working. Actually, if, there is a direct, sorry for the interruption, yeah. there is a direct uh, relation between non-European 
uh, artists or cultural workers immigration status that there has been multiple cases a professional person who is uh, internationally known also in Finland had to go through such a difficult process exactly. yes. to be to be recognized as a professional yes. worker in Finland yes. as exactly. an artist exactly and, and this is one of the problems of course this uh, because there there are and what my suggest, just suggestion is only about uh, so-called Valtion Taiteilija Purhat state artist grants. So they, because they are like a long-term long -term, uh, grants and um, kind of higher level grants, I would say. So those at least should be salaries. Thank you. And that's, but that's only one thing and it would only help certain people. But then we have a very little money for organizations that are working in the freelance scene, and that's another problem. Yes. Jada, very briefly. Well, sure. I think funding is, is the fundamental part of it. And just to respond to your question, if Taike considers to, to yes. officially announce English as an, as an application uh, language, then uh, there might be non-Finnish speakers could work as an expert to assess these uh, applications as well. So when we come to the language, we have to find a way how to overcome it, not to bring it as an excuse, I think, to solve it. But from the Taiki point, point of view, I would like to say that we need to really emphasize multi-year funding specifically for concern organizations and the ones dealing with cultural diversity, because if the money stays short term and in the amounts very small, I mean, thousands of euros, then of course the work stays as a project base. So this is the biggest challenge. And I think from the funding perspective, all public funded institutions, either from state or municipality, should be evaluated through their funding evaluation with the lenses of cultural diversity, inclusion and equity work they do. If they fail, then the funding evaluation should be shaky, <laughs> let's say, process for the institutions. It should be used as a direct criteria. I think this is the most important part. Thank you. Yes, yes. Um, Mina wanted to comment, but uh, would you like Paula or? Yeah, sure. Yes, please. <laughs> uh, 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 I'm fully aware of, of the discussion about artistic grants and, and salaries. And then again, being one of those persons who try to safeguard um, that the state budget lines would be still available for us. I'm really proud of the artistic grants system. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So uh, the, uh, about the organizations. So we have very little money to these small and middle scale uh, organizations. And our aim is to be able to allocate uh, long term uh, funding, a bigger funding than at the moment is the uh, size at the moment is more or less 20,000 euros that we are allocating to an organization. You can't do anything with that money. So the money should be bigger or we should, uh, we shouldn't allocate to so many organizations. We should, when we allocate money, then it should be uh, the size that people can actually really work with that money. And it should be long term. At the moment, there's only possibility to give uh, three year grants to performing arts that we got now from the uh, new uh, system for, for this was so we got some extra money, but it goes only to performing arts and we should be able to allocate uh, this kind of money long term money to any organization that uh, is, a, does, is doing good work. If you let me, I want to ask Minna about this VOS uh, renovation or system, because, or is it your, your comment is very short or? Very yes, please. I mean, <laughs> I just wanted to point out that I think the questions of short funding and small funding are questions that have to do with the entire arts and culture field. Um, and I think it's good to try to search for solutions that are not based on more funding for from government to the arts, whereas actually the risks at the moment are to completely the other direction, 
we at the moment have a risk that there's a 300 million risk for the for funding for for the arts culture sports libraries youth work science so we kind of have to understand also i think in the situation we're in and trying to see how the current money can be allocated different yes thank you and uh, mina uh, yes, Jada, please. Well, that's why evaluation is very important, performance evaluations, because this money, whatever numbers it will come, it comes from also diverse background of taxpayers. So we cannot assume that if there is a cut, okay, let's get out the uh, diversity work. And then, of course, what happens to our money? We are also contributing to the society with our task. I mean, uh, sorry, tax. That's true, actually. Yes, because everybody is uh, speaking of this uh, voice renovation. Let's get back to this. And uh, I would like to have your opinion and um, some explanation for some of us who are not really aware of that. That voice uh, system is reform reforming a state financial support or funding for the performing arts, including circus, theater, music, dance, and so on, for people who are not aware. And, um, how do you think that the diversity and inclusion can be considered as a direct criterion for voss renovation? Are there some strategies or how do you think of it? Are there possibilities that we can think about? In this uh, renovation, that because everybody now is speaking from this, how to allocate the already existing sources. Yes. Um, um, Let's see. What I, I, I maybe said this before today, what makes me wonder, and even with the report, is this kind of, uh, yes, I, I'm happy to read about um, uh, the high, highlighting of, of the central government transfer system. I don't understand why that is chosen as the one because we have so many other systems to, mm. to give grants, to give state subsidies uh, and to support um, national uh, art institutions. So I find it interesting why this really, this one is the one that is kind of, you know, well, look very close to. and. Um, uh, if I'm correct, I would say that still the 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 basics is is the the the, the uh, so-called <laughs> many years so kind of you know how many people do how much work per year plus these kind of actual costs. Uh, if I remember correctly, in the draft of of, of that. Uh, that proposal for legislation, uh, there were uh, in two paragraphs uh, some, some sentences which are valuable for us. One of them was about uh, promoting cultural diversity as a duty, the other one is mainstreaming and enhancing cultural services for people with different mm -hmm. languages, which is more like the audience part of this story. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think that if we are lucky so uh, that proposal for legislation will be in the parliament to be discussed pretty soon but it's not there yet so this moment uh, today is not the time that i could say anything more because we actually haven't given the proposal out yet as yeah. a government so so that's why i have to be very precise here uh, and what I would like to say is that we should really find a way to talk about all the ways that we can actually financially support, uh, find all the ways that we are able to have more dialogue, really to talk about the criteria, how shallow or deep mm -hmm. they might be, to kind of, you know, use all the means we have to make a better world from this point of view that we are yes. discussing here today. <laughs> so I think it's kind of, you know, like, uh, really being stuck into one thing which is important but it's not the whole picture thank you yes uh, first paula well, we have like a very first i want to say that we have maximum of 10 minutes before qa 
So I need to also, I know that so many people have questions online and probably some people also present here. Please. Yes, Paula. Uh, yeah, I just want to re uh, respond why, why it's so important. It's of course the money because uh, the, the VOS system, uh, the state money that goes to VOS system is about nearly, I don't have the figures here, but about 200 millions. And the national uh, organizations that are three, the National Gallery, National Theatre, National Opera, get about 16 million. But the freelance scene that where, where most of the non foreign born people are also working uh, and uh, most of the, of the newly uh, graduated artists are gets about, we are allocating 17 million euros to, to the, these organizations. And we get 2000 applications and we can allocate to 675 organizations that 17 million euros. So it's so small. That's why there is kind of a big contradiction in the, in the system. And that's why people are talking about it. It's, it's, it's very important question. That's, that's why. And then there's also ministry that is allocating money to the, the scene to organizations like unions and, uh, um, uh, yes, that association, all kind of associations, art associations, is about 19 million euros. So there are many, many, uh, all kinds of uh, specific money, but all the specific money is so small. And it makes also the, the segregation that we have. There is specific money for cultural diversity and specific money for this and this. So it's so split it here and there. So that's why it's quite difficult to handle uh, the whole system. And uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for explaining. Yes. And then I would like to have Jada's opinion on the fund, this uh, I would, funding matter. If, if I try to be practical here, um, I mean, municipalities are the biggest funders of arts and culture, not government, not national government. Sorry, Minna. But, um, and we have elections next year. So my question is, does the art and arts and culture field have a message to municipal decision makers? All the cities are, all the cities and municipalities are adopting a city strategy or a municipal strategy after the elections. What, what do they say about culture and diversity? At the moment, it's been very difficult for, in most municipalities to get anything on culture to their strategies. I would also kind of point out that, in a way, foundations are big funders of arts and culture. If you get big, big foundations, philanthropic foundations moving on, on issues of cultural diversity, I know certain are already. I think it also builds up courage in government to move on this issue. Yes. And I think in that sense, this idea that you would have numerous culture, arts and culture organizations committing to certain, certain standards and certain code of conducts on, on, on promoting arts and culture, certain practices on recruiting, certain practices on unconscious bias training, certain practices on, on audience analysis, I think it would help a lot. It would, it would push the found funders to, to demand these issues. The sports have done this already. Sports have been very, much better in doing this. Sports associations yes. have these, like everyone's, everyone's playing standards that make sure that there's no bullying, there's mm -hmm. no racism, there's, red, there's a red card to, to racism in football. So I think yes. arts and culture should look outside arts and culture for practices. Like, absolutely. Jada, please. Well, thank you very much. Of course, uh, from global art point position, uh, we have to address everything, <laughs> municipality and also ministry funding. But of course, in general, funding makes uh, organizations to run and it's the blood. If you give enough blood, they run well. If you cut the blood, of course, they also understand there is a kind of sickness. So we have to see also from that perspective perspective and uh, from the funding point of view the big cultural in, uh, or uh, foundations the um, Finnish cultural foundation so and culture also is one of the bigger uh, funding organization for our organization has also changed their way of thinking and uh, taking English as a language into their work uh, because of our uh, ongoing work with them and this is something they mentioned to us and recently global art point has a team up with with Demos Helsinki, we as a small organization, almost four years old, wanted to understand 
how we measure up against our goals. So we ask them to evaluate us through anonymous interviews uh, conducted by three funding organs, sorry, three uh, um, collaborative organizations, HAM, Esposite Theater, EMMA, two funding organizations, Ministry, uh, Soyman Culture Rasto and one international collaborator. So the results are remarkable. We can also share this report. Therefore, I recommend everyone in the cultural field, external evaluation and monitoring is so healthy. We experience it, therefore it's important. And I think uh, from the worst point of view, maybe evaluation comes only through how many labor year they, they have in their organization. If they have been evaluated different way, the result would be different. And Academy Finland does this. I don't know the universities when you mentioned Paula has something to, uh, with that. But I mean, monitoring and having external evaluation is the, is the most important part because institutions should reflect the society of today. They should look like their societies. Therefore, especially big and national institutions have important role because they need to reproduce positive so role models for kids. If kids don't see themselves represented on the stage or in the leadership positions, then they will think that this is not for us. And if we look at the big institutions, we see the picture. And we need to really also promote and give specific funding and capacity building, as you said, Tommy, for the new leaders, because we need to really transform the art seal uh, from the perspective of more outbox thinking more emerging art forms and of course we should utilize the cognitive diversity because it's it's proved that hybrid teams are much more smarter we don't need to even discuss it so if we only come together with like-minded people we will end up with the like-minded solutions so funding has a big is a big tool for that but i would like to little bit point out from the funding point of view how we can that was the main question of to research, activate and participation in the workforce of the foreign born art makers. I think we should really focus on that solution. And as a complement to the Non-Discrimination Act and the Equality Act, I would suggest that we should really develop uh, equity uh, employment act then institutions should develop this fair recruitment process and they will be evaluating everyone in a I mean, fair cases. And of course, if we think about how uh, the institutions will enable uh, employment of the foreign born art makers, then we should uh, pick people based on their merits and capacity. We should really empower and invest in people to become the next generations of leaders. I mean, if you look, look, look around, there is not even one diverse background as people in a leadership positions in the senior management level. I mean, this is unbelievable. We are talking about a society which is already so diverse in, on the street, but not in the institutions. So let's really focus on that on a short term. And of Thank course- Thank you. Let maybe okay. one, if you have, because I, I believe like, uh, audience also has some questions and online we receive do we have yes but uh, would you like to briefly comment or share your views or shall we take the q a the questions how do you feel yes to the audience as well yes yes thank you so if it's okay, I will read those questions or please give them to me. Yes. Okay. Uh, somebody uh, posed this uh, question for all of you that if the law is a clear obstacle why not amending the law? Like if the regulation, there is something problematic in the regulation, this is my understanding of this question. Why not amending that regulation? Uh, does someone want to I'm respond? I'm wondering if this goes back to the language criteria. Um, I, I would say that like, it depends if, for instance, if you're in a public office, 
that's a constitution issue. So in a way, we are a bilingual country and that kind of sets the criteria. I think that this is Minna maybe knows better, but this is probably one of the reasons why a lot of big cultural institutions have turned, have been transferred into, into a foundation model. So they have more flexibility in their recruiting criteria. This was regarding the language, actually, this question. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah. well, um, the law should be changed for, for the, the language requirements, because at the moment, um, all the civil servants has to know uh, Finnish and Swedish. And it, it's also problematic for all Finns who have been educated abroad, because they probably don't know Swedish. So that is a problematic question because there is the, the, the Swedish is also a minority language. So we should find a flexible model for that for this question so that it's it allows anyway uh, good professionals to get work also in the civil servant uh, positions. Yes. So yeah. Can I briefly just comment on this language issue? Of course, it's important. And we all, by the way, myself, I'm, I'm integrating in, in Swedish because I'm a part of Swedish speaking uh, family and maybe a worse immigrant profile, you know, <laughs> integrating <laughs> in Swedish. But anyway, what I'm trying to say that language can be used as a door opener, not only barrier. So uh, in the profile that I shared at the beginning that people even say that 42% of the respondents, they more or less speak Finnish, but most probably those people should be given a chance to work and learn the language during the work process because it's a professional suicide to ask that capacity to live somewhere five or six years and then come back you know we have to and make it in the way uh, which is a kind of offering from the system and particularly if people are between the age of 25 and 40 between continuing the profession and then sacrificing the profession itself and focusing on learning the language just very focused in a very focused way. I don't believe many artists and cultural workers would make that choice. But if there are recruitments in different fields available that you can learn the professional language spoken in the field, then there is more high motivation from the people with foreign background. Uh, is there any question in the audience? Yes. Uh, I need to, you need to, yes, but you need to be here uh, because of this COVID situation just to protect the next person who uses. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, yes, my name is Eric Söderblom. I'm the director of Espo City Theatre. And I just wanted, since we had the funding and things have been discussed, uh, to, to give an opening to my position, right? To, the, to these questions. Uh, I think that I could represent uh, a kind of, kind of average of theater leaders in Finland. Many would be of the same opinion. And I would say uh, we are most of us are aware of the situation. We know that not much have happened, has happened in the last 10 years. And we know that there is 10, 10 years time to do the change because this country needs the people from abroad living here for many, many reasons, not only cultural, also, also economic. So we have 10 years time to do the change. We would surely be prepared to do it. Then we have, it, it, can be, it become, becomes a leadership issue, kind of leader, leadership challenge. We have the organizations with this uh, uh, bias thing, to, to convince, we have the audience that needs to be partly changed or if, uh, find new people that, that needs resources, that needs work, outreach work. Uh, and we have to keep up uh, the communication to, to, to the ministry and, uh, and cities and funders. And my, my, my very simple kind of thing is if there would be a support from the uh, funders, from the state, through us, from the cities, for a change. If there would be preferably carrots, in the worst, worst case, sticks, 
to, to for, for us leaders to do what you would like to do, it would be much easier. So, okay, there is a dis discussion of the freedom of the arts and so forth. It's for, for many part, the, the discussion of freedom is very problematical. I, I don't want to go into that now, but I just say if there, there would be kind of uh, lines in the in the criteria that would force us to do the change we, we need to do and would like to do, it would be easier. Thank you. I, w I would just, sorry, I'm maybe repeating myself, but I also want to call out for the responsibility of individual institutions and their leadership and their boards and so on. I mean, there's, there's, there's a part that can be done by funders, but a part has to do with who's on your board, what competencies do you have on your board, uh, and so on. And I think there's a lot of things that can be done on that side. I, I'm, I'm a bit skeptical, I must say, about putting more criteria for government grants. The, the more, more criteria we put on, on it, then I think there is a risk that it kind of limits the freedom of the arts. I, I, I know that if I look at, for instance, the Arts Council of England, they've even gone from talking about grants to talking about investments in art, and then they, they evaluate the, the impact of their investments. And I think it's a very different idea than what we in Finland have about mm -hmm. culture. But I think we should, we should find a way in dialogue with the cultural scene on what's the, what are the standards that, that we can uphold so that, that certain responsibility is carried by the institutions themselves and, and certain by the funders. Yes. But it can be a one-sided thing, I think. First, Jed and Paola. Yeah, um, well, uh, I disagree. I think that at the moment there is no criteria, but there should be quite clear criteria, but also uh, a, a certain flexibility with the criteria. For example, there should be always one part that is uh, discretional or something. How, I don't know the, the word. Harkinavarainen. But uh, there should be some, some uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, it should be kind of rethought. Mm -hmm. So uh, not the idea is not to make it more complicated or well, always it's a, a bit complicated, but it's it's it shouldn't be clear, very clear. Yeah, I would like to also disagree with you because I I totally agree with Paula said when there is no even criteria, we cannot talk about this as a kind of extra sh uh, burden on the on the shoulders of the institutions. It should be a clear criteria first. And since uh, UK Arts Council has been mentioned, we have a very good dialogue as an organization. And I would like to say that UK, UK Arts Council has done about that. And they even define they are looking for organizations look like their communities. And they really cut the funding from the national portfolio organizations, which led also some change in the in the system but what they do from bigger perspective they ask uh, institutions to be uh, accountable and publicly share their uh, work in terms of diversity and all diversity i mean including uh, gender diversity from gender diversity to cultural diversity and everything in the boards in the decision making level on stage and anyway, everything and they publish it they just leave the public comment on it. So there is a kind of healthy uh, monitoring system has been going on there. So we can very well uh, take this good example. Thank you. Thanks. Mina, would you like to also comment on it? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm the, the weak link, yeah. Because uh, in a way, I uh, being a civil servant for at least two years, and uh, I'm quite often thinking about uh, administrative burden. I really kind of, you know, how much information we want, what we are going to do with the information that we get from the organizations. Are we, are we ready? Do we have the people to read it, to understand it, to, to act uh, from what they've understood? Uh, uh, I think that's a good question because what I really, really don't like in a way is 
to pretend that we actually uh, now really make a change, but we don't. I don't want to have the criteria which you can actually tick the box and you, you, that's it. Uh, I do understand kind of, you know, would be very, very needed to be more open, uh, in a way more honest, to have a dialogue, have this kind of a trust, kind of, you know, share a com common or shared trust in the society that we are aiming at the same direction, that we are far from perfect, and we try to do what is wise now uh, and continue. Because in a way to think, well, let's do it this way, the way that it's done in Europe somewhere and see how it fits, it might not fit because uh, when you really think about, for example, funding systems, so they have very like deep roots. Um, so I'm a bit uh, hesitant. And then again, as I've said before, I would really, really, I'm, I'm looking forward to reading the, the proposals from our working, working group or the working group, which is appointed by the ministry to really see what they have in their minds and, and what we can do actually about it. But I don't want to kind of not jump into the conclusions one is as again, because they are so tempting. They are very tempting, but I don't think if they work or not. Thank you. Uh, Tommy had his no, I, 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 I do. I, I like the fact that we disagree on something. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that there shouldn't be any criteria, but I think that kind of what Minna was saying, and I think you kind of <laughs> hear that the more criteria, the more reporting we put on cultural institutions, the more administrative work there is. And I think that I think the Finnish tradition of arts and culture funding from the public sector is quite strongly arm's length. It's a very different model than the UK, uh, at least England. Uh, I know I, I, I chair the board of the Finnish Institute in London, and the, the like. What we hear from UK-based arts organizations is that the directors don't do anything else that, than administration. They re, they report and report and report and and measure and measure. And I I do think that it's it's easy for us to say that there should be more criteria on an issue that we all support. But then let's say that we have a change in government and they want to push on criteria that we are not that keen on. But if we, can, if we open that door that there should be more and more criteria for government funding, it's not without risks. That's what I'm trying to say. And that's why I think Thank this you. Needs, needs to be negotiated with the field. Thank you so much, Paula. I think that benchmarking is very, very important and we can learn from other countries and it's absolutely important. Um, and nobody wants uh, too much administration, that's for sure. But then we can stop talking if we don't have the criteria for or, or what, we, what are the current, current topics that we have had here. So it, it doesn't help that we write a sentence that okay, um, we don't we we treat everyone the same way. If it doesn't, if the, if it if it if it's not in the funding uh, model. Yes, Jada. And there is one question. Okay, from I, people. I, I, I of course agree. And whatever we, we see as a good example, it shouldn't be um, how to say it important exactly how it is. It should be localized for the local needs. So, but still, we can learn at least from the good good examples. Uh, but if we don't put a kind of any criteria, not ask the institutions to be accountable uh, for in terms of inclusion and diversity and equity actions, and I don't know as also reports that just is how we're gonna solve those problems because there has been incredible research and evident over a decade and we are still talking about the same problems means that the uh, of course decision makers hold the power and leaders also mentioned but it seems they haven't done much so it should be somehow asked very clearly and i would like to just give little example as a background to what i'm saying because report also multiple times uh, makes this reference uh, the attitudes and the mindset of the gatekeepers is the fundamental challenge for 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 the whole topic that we are talking about and based on eu europe Barometer survey on discrimination of 2019, 65 
percent of Finns regard discrimination based on ethnicity as a common phenomena in Finland. So it would be naive to think that this perception or art scene is free from this perception. What if, if we have this kind of decision makers and workers in the art scene, how are we going to really challenge them if there is no criteria, quotas for, uh, for certain uh, number of people to be employed or given space as a kind of foreign background of people. And we might end up very well in a situation that uh, state organizations or national organizations have quite uh, problematic narratives and they, they don't even care what's going on on the street. So there are examples around that. I need to stop you at this point. I would like to read one of the comments that one of the participant, online participant has posed for the, not as a question, but a comment that participation of diverse group of people does not imply only joining the game, but also making the rules of the game and the conditions under which the game is played and participation as possibility for transformation, diversity and participation in decision making place as well. So the point of this person comes from the they are involved in a group with arts and management uh, um, degree and in Sibelius Academy, and they have been investigating 15 uh, institutions in, in the metropolitan area, and there wasn't uh, many uh, directors or uh, decision makers who have the foreign background. So this comment come from there. And there is one last question. Who should take the just responsibility for making the initiative for changing the law. This has come from one other participant. Which law? <laughs> which, which law? <laughs> the law, like, <laughs> like let's say like uh, everybody has spoke about like the changing of the language for recruitment, it is a still law and law has to take into consideration some sort of reform in order to recruit people with English for instance, and so on, as a language, who should take the first initiative? Well, politicians, but <laughs> it's very difficult to say yeah. who. <laughs> yes. But I, I, don't think, I don't think the law is the main obstacle for, for hiring uh, people with a foreign background or English speakers to, to Gulfstream institutions. I think there are certain key leadership positions where the constitution requires that if you're a municipal government, if you work for municipal government or, or the ministry, you have to be able to speak both languages. But Thank I think you. for most cultural institutions, it's their own decision. In a way, I would have had the same comments. And then again, I would like to say that we are actually doing something. For example, there's a prerequisite for for getting state subsidy for, for operation is that you have to actually um, uh, fulfill the employee obligations in accordance with equality and equity legislation that is mentioned now in the criteria, mm. which is needed, but at the same time, and I'm not, this is not, a, a, this is not a, well, a comical comment. The, Fact is, and now here in the criteria, we are asking the institutions to, you know, apply the law, which is like what? I'm, I'm, I'm happy for that, but we have to understand we have good legislation in many kind of you know, fields or areas which come close to the questions that we have discussed today or even are overlapping. But the point is we should kind of, you know, really read that, implement that, follow that, understand what is asked from the institutions already. So that's one of the points. And the other thing is this kind of constitution which really limits our possibilities in changing the law. And then again, not all, not all the legislation is in, in the field of our ministry, the Ministry of Education and Culture. They are in the uh, uh, Social Affairs Ministry, in the Justice Ministry and so on. So uh, yes, we can be the, the, the matchmakers or runner in-betweens, but we are not the ones in our ministry who can actually initiate.
initiate. Uh, then it comes. Changes. Yes, thank you. Then it comes the question of monitoring because also the report said that, if I'm not mistaken now with the numbers, more than half of legally obliged institutions which are funded by the state, they did not have any equality plan. So basically there is a necessity and need for having a monitoring not only relying on the report sent by the institution, but uh, this report also shows, the research shows that people do not feel obligation to follow the regulation which is in the place. Yes, Paula. Well, that is one of the criteria, for example, in Taike, that there, well, you can ask if you have that or not. So it's, of course, possible to monitor but our problem is that there are, well, in cultural area, of course, you can uh, uh, recruit anyone if, if it's not a civil servant. That, and then you have to have a cer certain requirements. But uh, our, the, the field has the problem that there is no money to employ anyone. So that is the problem. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. This was very hot debate. And let's just uh, not only be hopeful and as you said be pragmatic very practical and carry on this conversation because conversation is essential and to seek together and understand what what can be done and i agree with you Tommy, that everybody can do something we all are capable of doing one step at a time so yes thank you also everybody present online and present here for listening and taking time. Hopefully we can achieve more in the upcoming years and this year together. Thank you. Thank you for the panelists and thank you Sebide for, um, for this um, moderating the panel and um, now it remains the concluding words and uh, it's overwhelming i don't know how to conclude this um, i i want to thank first of all i want to thank ateneum for uh, having us here and i want to really really thank our backstage personnel both from ateneum uh, culture for all and uh, global point making this possible and also the ministry of education and culture um, the avaus report wouldn't be there if you would not have funded it so important things and important companions and friends and um, concluding yes uh, there's only few things i concluded we have miras uh, mira has been following this online so we have her conclusions as well but for myself like uh, overwhelming and when you are the change you don't fit in any box and this is like a uh, global points reality we don't fit in any box we can't tick any box so we but we want to be there making the change we are needed so uh, don't be afraid of us work with us and um, then there was this um, thing about Tommy just left, he, he has to run so, uh, to the uh, city, city meeting, so, uh, but he was still looking when I was starting speaking. So art is an investment and this is like uh, we have to also think in a way um, it's a social investment and what, what is social investments for? They are for us, for the society. And then one thing I've been striving all my life when working in the cultural field, and that is over 30 years, I want everybody to get paid for their work. Salary, salary. The grants are beautiful in a way, but really, if you want to have a, have a good society, so people should get paid for their work. And then I, you know, sometimes I get the question, but don't we have already enough artists? So how do you measure that when you don't have the, give the possibility to uh, work in different fields? Um, the artists we have in Finland, they are mostly highly educated. They are like, so that education can be used on several fields. And also 
I get this. We have a lot of, we have already enough artists in Finland. Mm, maybe so. But do we have like uh, artists uh, focusing all the people we have here? Like this is what was to my mind anyways Jada's uh, point that we should see the whole society and the need of the uh, different arts uh, we have for the moment and in the uh, in the future as well. But um, enough for me. So uh, let's hear what Mira Mira has. She, she's been following all day. So OG will bring Mira's conclusions. Yes, I will be Mira's voice today. So she sent me these closing words. Uh, it was a rich afternoon. I learned new things like Jana earlier said about Emmy's presentation. Um, like Emmy quoted Tanya Kanas, is cultural di diversity a white word? We are vital to do more. In the beginning, I said that I hope we can discuss the necessary changes at different levels. That is the level of decision-making at the level of cultural institutions as well as in content and public work. For me, it seems that we have hope and good intentions and actual work, but also a lot to do. This discrimination and difficulties to find job opportunities are sad but true threshold, and we have to focus on a true change. We need structures to root uh, diversity in organizations daily life. For our point of view, I think that we really need also to focus next to the structures that prevent POC, uh, P people of color or racialized professionals to enter the cultural field. Also, it is important to keep intersectionality in mind. At decision making, uh, more carrots is needed. Funding uh, need and can change. It could be conditional on diversity, but there seems not to be easy answers. Diversity at decision-making levels will hopefully come. Benchmarking, for example, from UK is a good idea. And for us as citizens, let's keep uh, keep eye on money. <laughs> Munis, municipal elections for cultural institutions. Everyone are responsible. Invest for diversity. You can educate yourself and commit to diversity and equity work at many levels. It is important to know that we have a lot of experts in this field. Well done equality plan could help you to make goals. You can budget to this work. You can order consultation and education by many professionals. For example, our, our trained diversity agents. Recruitment processes could be more equal. Uh, about content and public work. Our society is diverse and is becoming more diverse. Content, on the art, content of the art and culture is appealing when it appeals to a wide variety of people, when it is accessible and does not discriminate anybody, and when there is diverse representation in all levels of organization and audience. We can do a lot. Uh, let's go home and digest what we discussed. And, and, and Mira also wants to thank everyone who Jan already thanked, but I could uh, point out uh, Tuukka Ervasti, who has been taking care of the Zoom uh, technique, and Timo Nurminen, who has been taking care of the technique here in the Atenum Hall. So thanks, you, uh, thank to, thanks to you, and Mira also thanks me to, to stop substituting her on stage. So big thanks to everyone, and bye-bye, and, and please remember to fill in the feedback form you have uh, in your email.